So for number 19, we want to determine whether um, this geometric series converges or diverges. And a geometric series has this form over here where we have some constant a, and that's being multiplied by a ratio, which is raised to the natural numbers. So we have a times r to the power of 0 plus a times r to the power of 1 and so on. Um, and so for it to converge, it means that if we add up all of these, it's, we have infinite terms, it's going to get us somewhere to a definite number, right? It's not going to go to infinity or it's not going to oscillate. But how can it be? Well, the only way that you can keep adding things infinitely and then have your sum go to a definite place is if the terms that you are adding, eventually they just are essentially zero. Because if you just keep adding what amounts to zero, your total sum is not going to change, right? So since a doesn't change, the changing term here for each one is r to the power of n. It means that the limit of r to the power of n as n goes to infinity has to be equal to zero. Um, because then we're just adding what is essentially zero and it doesn't change, right? And the only way for this limit to be equal to zero is if the absolute value of r is less than one. So if r is, say, one half, if I raise that to a million, that's practically going to be zero. Whereas if r is even 1.01, .01, if I raise that to a million, that's going to grow, right? So we do want the, it to go to zero. So with that being said, um, we are going to try to write this sum here. Um, in this form, because if we write it in this form, we can very clearly see what the ratio is. So we have, okay, so the series goes 10 minus 2 plus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.08 um, plus, and at first it looks like there's no pattern, but let's just focus on the integers and not the it's decimal placing. So if we just focus on the integers, it goes 1, 2, 4, 8, which probably means that the next one's going to be 16, and then 32, and so on. Now, let's focus on the decimal placing. We can see that the first term is in the tens, right? So 10 to the power of 1. The second one is in the units, so that's going to be 10 to the power of 0. The third term has one decimal point, so 10 to the minus 1 and then has two decimal points, 10 to the minus 2, so the third one's going to have three decimal points, and then four decimal points, and so on and so forth. So we can see here that the next term is going to have three decimal points, and it's going to have a 16 in it, so point less 0, 1, 6. The next term, it alternates signs, so minus four decimal points, and then it's going to have a 3, 2. 0 0.0032 plus, and so on and so forth, right? So once we've seen this, now we just need to be able to express this as a ratio. So we're going to set this as a sum going from zero to infinity. Um, and we can clearly see that we have two to the power of something and 10 to the power of something as well, right? But now we just have to adjust our index. So I'm just going to write the power of twos. Um, I'm just going to rewrite them as like so. It's going to be 4 is 2 to the power of 2, 8 is 3 to the power of 3, to the power of 4, to the power of 5, and so on. So if I plug in 0, my first term with n is going to be 2 to the power of 0, which checks out, right? If I plug in, the next term is, is going to be the index 1, and so it follows along. That works out. The 2 is correctly um, aligned. However, the 10 is not correctly aligned, because if I my first index is 0. So if I plug in 0, I should expect 10 to the power of 0. However, I actually have 10 to the power of 1, right? So what's the pattern here? We can see that the n is going to be negative. So I'm going to have a minus n here, because as we move on, we're getting more and more negative. However, if I just plug in 0, I'm I'm not going to get the desired first term that I need. So maybe what I should do is do minus 10 to the power of n plus 1. And so on, let's check. Minus 10 to the power of 0 plus 1 is 10 to the power of 1. And then 10 to the minus 0, right? Uh, sorry, the second item is going to index is going to be 1. Uh, maybe I should expand this out so you guys can see. So 10 to the power of minus 0 plus 1 is 10 to the power of 1. And then the next index is 1, so 10 to the power of minus 1 plus 1 is 10 to the power of 0. 
and the next index is 2, minus 2 plus 1, which is 10 to the minus 1. And you can very clearly see here that these line up perfectly, right? We've managed to express this as a ratio. So we're almost done. Um, there is something that's missing, though. We're missing the alternating minus, because you can see here that um, whenever the exponent is even, the term has a plus in it, right? So to, to the power of 4, there's a plus. Uh, and then whenever the exponent is odd, there's a minus. So whenever it's odd, there's a minus, and so on, right? So what this tells us is that we're going to have a minus 1 to the power of n, because minus 1 to the power of 2, it's even, it's going to be positive, but minus 1 to the power of 1, which is odd, is going to be negative. Um, so now that we have this, we're just going to rearrange it, because we want to express it as a times r to the power of n. So we want a single expression raised to n. So we're just going to say then that this is going to be, so that's going to be minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. And then the instead of going 10 to the minus n, I'm going to break this down into 10 to the minus n times 10 times 1, right? And this minus n, which is the same thing as 10 to the power of 1 over 10 to the power of n, because the n is negative. So I'm just going to say that this is 10 to the power of n. So I put the negative n in the denominator, and then all of this times 10, because I broke up this exponent. I broke up into minus n times 10 to the power of 1. So once I have this, um, let me just clean this up a little. That's going to be 10. And that is it. I have managed to express it as something that looks like this, right? We can very clearly see. Oops, my n is out of place. My n should be up here. We can very clearly see that these expressions match up. So we have that a is therefore equal to 10, and r is going to be equal to minus 2 over 10, which is minus 1 over 5. Um, so... That is it. We have found the A and we have found the ratio, right? Um, and so now it's asking us, if it is convergent, find its sum. So is this convergent? Remember what we said about convergence. The absolute value for the ratio has to be less than 1. Because then when you raise that ratio to infinity, it's going to go to 0, right? So we can see that the absolute value of negative 1 fifth is definitely less than 1. So we have that the absolute value of 1 fifth is less than 1, so it converges. Um, and after finding out that it converges, we just have to find the sum. And the sum of an infinite series, geometric series that is convergent, is given by a over 1 minus r. So given that a is 10 and r is 1 over 5, uh, sorry, negative 1 over 5, so we're going to have 10 over 1 minus minus 1 fifth, which is the same thing as 10 over, we're going to sum, so 1 plus 1 fifth is 6 over 5, right? Which is the same thing as 50 over 6, which is the same thing as 25 over 3. So 25 over 3 is the result of the sum of this series here. And that is it for this problem.